Okay, some more from section 2.3, and we have the quotient rule. And so in this case, if I have a function h of x, which is f of x over g of x, and I would like its derivative, derivative of h of x with respect to x, then here, now here, all of a sudden, order absolutely matters. Uh, it is the top. So I take the, the derivative of the top first. So I have the derivative of f of x with respect to x times g of x, the bottom, minus... Um, and uh, then we have our uh, derivative of the bottom, so g of x with respect to x times our function f of x. So it looks similar so far to the product rule, but it absolutely matters that the top uh, function up here, uh, that gets the derivative first, and the negative goes on the derivative of the bottom. But then divided by g of x squared. So this is definitely the more, most complicated thing we've run into. But again, we just only have to take two derivatives. And, and so using, uh, say, something like, uh, um, well, we can look at this a couple of ways. So let's look at h of x equal 1 over x. Okay, well, according to this, my top function is the function 1, my bottom function is the function x. And so, if I want h prime of x, I have, just filling everything in, the derivative of 1 with respect to x, which is 0, uh, times x minus the derivative of x with respect to x times 1, all divided by x squared, because that's what's on the bottom. And so when I do that, I get my 0 times x minus 1 times 1, all over x squared, which is just minus 1 over x squared. Okay, but 1 over x, we can use the power rule, right? h of x equals 1 over x equals x to the negative 1. And so h prime of x is negative 1 times x to the negative 1 minus 1. And that's negative 1 times x to the negative 2, but I can write that as negative 1 over x squared. So, there we have it. Worked both, for both of them. And, um, you know, so the, um, it's not bad, right? So I've got the product rule, uh, or sorry, the uh, quotient rule. You know, if I have say sine of x over x squared. I just identify the top, I identify the bottom, and I plug things in. So h prime, I need the derivative of the top. So that's that. And then times x squared minus uh, the derivative of x squared uh, times the sine of x. So, if you just take your time and you put everything in as, as it comes, and don't worry about getting the answer right away, uh, then derivative of sine is the cosine of x. We've got x squared minus 2x times sine of x, and all over x to the fourth. Now, you know, if you leave it like that, it is correct. I make fun of you, but it is correct. So, now, you should at least get that x squared out in front of the cosine x. That's how we write stuff. And then minus 2x 
sine of x and divided by x to the fourth. So you should at least do that. Now, notice I've got an x in both terms in the top, and I've got, you know, an x in the bottom. So I could factor an x out and make this, you know, x over x like that. Um, and then I have an x cosine x uh, minus 2 sine x. Running out of room here. Sorry about that. And over x cubed. And we close all that down. And, you know, as I, I ran out of room, so I need another page. So what we had was... Um, we had this, uh, so I'll just go back and forth here a little bit. Um, uh, what do we have? We had our x squared cosine x. I have to go back up. Okay, so we had our x squared cosine x uh, minus uh, 2x sine x over x to the fourth. Whoops, x to the fourth. And so then I factored that x out of the top and one out of the bottom. So we have our uh, x cosine x minus 2 sine x over x cubed. And of course x over x is 1, and so I can write this as x cosine x minus 2 sine x over x cubed. Now, like I say, this is this is correct up here. This is fine. I don't I don't have any issue with that. But if you needed to take a second derivative, um, I'm pretty darn sure you'd like to simplify things as much as possible, and so you need to do something like that. Okay, so that's the quotient rule.